As a result of Brexit, the demand for daffodils grown in Ireland has boomed. So Colm is off to meet daffodil farmer and broadcaster Dara McCullough. There are very few fresh products that we grow here in Ireland and export on a huge scale. But the one fresh product that we do export may just surprise you. This is the story of one of Ireland's daffodil men. And his name is Dara McCullough, and his farm is Elm Grove in Meath. So Dara, you're probably best known as a broadcaster and a journalist, but first of all, you are a farmer. Yeah, this is where I spend most of my waking hours. Um, it's, I suppose I'm the third generation of McCullough here on this farm. My granddad bought this just after the war. And both him and my dad were really innovative. You know, they tried their hand at everything over the years. My granddad would have actually grown gladiola as cut flower way back in the 60s and 70s. What we've specialised in, in the last 20 years is daffodils. But then when we got the hang of growing daffodils, we figured, you know what, there's nine months of the rest of the year when we could also be growing cut flowers. So we've kind of started stretching our legs into growing lots of other types of flowers. We grow about 90 acres of daffodils, and that's the, the big, I suppose, the biggest part of the farming system here. Many people may not know this, but according to Dara, the Silicon Valley of daffodil production globally is in fact in the UK and Ireland. But actually in global terms, you know, a 50 or 90 acre daffodil farm that this is, is pretty small because my main competitors are all in the UK, where there's farms that are 800, 1,000, even 2,000 acres in size, and that's just pure daffodils. So how do you compete with that kind of level of scale? So obviously they're bigger and maybe their overheads are less, but we have just as good soil quality and we, we have that sequential flowering right up until Easter. So we have that spread of production. So we go toe to toe on a, a daily basis during the season. Do you have any one variety as a standout amongst all the rest? Well, the daffodil that everybody knows, I think, is Dutch Master, and it's your classic yellow trumpet, nice big, strong stem, big head, and it really announces the arrival of spring. So when it comes to daffodils here in Ireland, we may not be on par with the giant production scale in the UK, but we can grow them, and the reason for this is our perfect climate. We're planting millions of daffodil bulbs every autumn. Just because we're picking these this year doesn't mean that we have to plant new bulbs here next year. The bulbs stay in the ground. So we'll actually leave these bulbs down for two, three, maybe even four years in the same place before we come in and lift them back out again. We don't pick the first year flowers. Okay. We like, like to leave the bulb root into the ground, get settled in. This section that we're in here is actually second year flowers. And we'll be back here next year picking again. So our advice to start picking daffodils here, what am I looking for? That's what I call a daffodil pencil. That is 30 centimetres long, show no colour, and it's going to survive in the chill chain. So you've got to be able to pick a thousand stems an hour. Are you really up for this? I'm up for it, I give it a go. All right, off it yourself. Over the course of the last few years, Dara has steadily increased his overall production by about 10% per year. And now since Brexit, the demand has increased even further. This has left an opening for flower growers to fill the gaps on the global daffodil stage. Brexit has been really good for the daffodil business. One of the things about Brexit was that the British said we're going to control immigration more. Of course, it's immigrant labour that daffodil growers depend on, rightly or wrongly. So when the Brits didn't have enough immigrants to pick their daffodils, there was a shortage of daffodils in the market, and that drove up prices. So it's gone from a situation where I would have been knocking on customers' door looking for new opportunities to where they're actually getting on planes and coming over to visit me and saying, hey, listen, we really need an alternative to the, uh, the British daffodil. What have you got? We started out supplying an Irish supermarket and uh, as that supermarket business grew, we grew with it. But in the last year, 
we've kind of gone a different direction. So the supermarket was saying, oh, you know what, can you take a, a price uh, cut? And we went, mm, don't think so, because actually global prices are increasing. And so as a result, we've basically parted company and I'm now selling 95, 96, 97% of all of my daftas that I produce into Europe. they are being exported out of the country. In 2022, Dara decided to cut out the middleman and sell his products online direct to consumers. Local markets have changed because of COVID, because COVID forced us online. We set up a little website and suddenly we're dealing with the public all over the country, not just people who could stop at our little shop at the farm gate. The public in general are more switched on to what's the sustainable choice for us here. Is there an alternative to the imported product? The online selling is a whole new side to the business that has just opened up, but it hasn't always been easy. I have to be able to ring a guy in Holland, market the product, organise the packaging, organise the finance, organise the staff, social media. You need to understand how to run a website. So a lot of different skills, but farmers and farming has always been that way. You're going to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. <laughs>